Welcome to Recently Logged, the podcast where we do all of our own stunts. Ooh. Well, and, uh, hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Greetings. Aloha. Welcome. <laughs> Hola. Namaste. <laughs> Konnichiwa. <laughs> apparently, uh, <laughs> apparently we're just saying hello. That's the entire podcast. That's the whole thing. Sorry to disappoint, guys. <laughs> for any for any long time listeners, that's yeah. all we're doing. We're not actually talking about rotation. No, we're not. It's a that that's just a joke. <laughs> it's just a joke. Yeah, it's a joke to get you to listen to all of our different hellos. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's all been a ruse. It's all been leading to this. Mike. Yes, it's all been. This is what the podcast since day one was. This was we've, all planned. We've just been trying to get people to listen to the different ways we can say hello. <laughs> yeah, this was all planned. Okay. <laughs> well, Ye- years in advance. Well, uh, welcome to Recently Logged, everyone. Uh, I'm Robbie. And I'm Micah. And we're Monsters Incorporated. Hey, that's my joke. (laughs) Well, I stole it from you, Micah, for this one episode. I did it like every week, like five weeks in a row, because I just said it because it popped into my head. (laughs) Wow. Uh, Yeah, today we're talking about Rogue Nation. We're talking about mission colon impossible space dash space rogue nation. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is this is the continuation of our Mission Impossible series. We started at Mission Impossible Un. Well, and if, have... you, if you think about it, we started at uh, Fallout because we did no, Fallout no, all those no, no, all those no, years ago. That is not ago, the like... series. That was like we did Fallout because it was a good movie a long time ago. Wow. But now we're doing the series. Okay, we started at Mission Impossible. And now we're on Mission Impossible 5. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah. Not to be mistaken with MI5. <laughs> Not to... <laughs> okay, in our quest to find this movie so we could watch it, like find a copy of it, <laughs> we went to a store and they had literally two copies of the movie MI5. Well, yeah, I, I, knew, I knew of the movie in, in MI5. And and when Ma, uh, and our mom had picked them up, she was like, it's MI5, right? And we were like, yeah, technically it's MI5. I mean, MI5. yes, it's MI5, but it is not the <laughs> and, MI5 that you were And she was for. like, oh, here. And she handed me one of the Blu-rays, and I didn't look at the back. Like, I didn't look at the front, and I just looked at the back and saw the rated R rating, and I was like, huh. Huh, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> I mean, this might be the raciest one. Like, who knows? No, uh, two is still the raciest <laughs> one. <laughs> well, I'll stand by that. I mean, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, do we want to get into the podcast? Uh, no. Okay. We're still saying hello, but... <laughs> Ni hao. <laughs> Ni hao. Uh, I don't know. What's, what's hello in French? Bonjour. In French, bonjour. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, All right, now I, we can get I, into do, the Do podcast. I know any others? <laughs> no. no my... Do I know any other <laughs> The hellos? podcast. The pacing, like, the pacing. <laughs> yeah, but do I know any others? Anyway, uh... <laughs> Let's go over the basic effects of the movie. Let's do it. Uh, We're talking about Mission Impossible or Mission... uh, You know, he did the whole thing. (laughs) I'm not going to do it again. Uh, It came out in 2015. Uh, It's rated PG-13. It's 131 minutes. It's got the the, the actors such as Tom Cruise, Jeremy Renner, Simon Pegg, Rebecca Ferguson... Ving Rams is what I'm committing to what his name is. <laughs> oh yeah, good old Rebecca Ferg. <laughs> <laughs> and uh Sean Harris. Sean Harris. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm like, who the uh, heck is Sean this Harris? This is this is directed by Christopher McQuarrie. Heck and yes, this is it the was. first Christopher McQuarrie screenplay Heck as well. Yes it is. So this was the first of the Christopher McQuarrie double feature kind of thing. Well, I mean it's about to be a triple feature, my god. Trilogy, if you will. Uh, it didn't get any significant awards. Oh. <laughs> or nominated for any significant oh. awards. Wait, really? That's yeah. kind of sad. This was really good. <laughs> and yeah. That's 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 all we got. That's it. That's literally that's, all we It's the podcast. That's literally all we all right, have. Alright, bye guys. Bye guys. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. Uh, I rated Mission Impossible Rogue Nation one like on uh, Letterboxd. I rated it negative 25 stars. <laughs> Out of negative 100. Out of negative 100, of course. (laughs) All right. Anyway, do we (laughs) want to go into our basic thoughts, Ruby? Yes, we do. Do you want to start? Yes, we do. Do you want to start those out? (laughs) Sure. Um, Okay, so first things first. 
I must say all the words inside my head. I'm fired, I'm fired up, up and tired of the way the that way things, that things have, have been. been. Oh, oh. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, I really uh, was kind of bored with this movie the first time I watched it. And I don't Boo. know why. I really have no idea Boo. why. I, I I don't know what Boo. that era of, that era of me watching movies. Apparently, I just got really easily bored with movies. He had no taste. I had no taste. Um, and now that I have taste, now that I am supreme movie critic, uh, <laughs> with the final say on uh, the quality of movies, objectively, of course. Yes. Um, I can now confirm that this is uh, objectively the second best film in the Mission Impossible franchise. <laughs> I'm glad we're agreeing. <laughs> Ghost Protocol's third, though. Yeah. Very, very close. Very close. Then um, three. Then one. But then yeah. Two. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I really, I really enjoyed this one. It's got um, some of the most memorable action set pieces. If, if, if a little hard to believe, but uh, still. Uh, it's got. Why is that hard to believe? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, it doesn't have like, like it has a it has good action, which is a uh, hard to believe from an action movie. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it it's just I didn't remember the stunts being this good. Like the wow. the the main actually the sequences in this are really really good. Mm-hmm. Um, what else to say? The Christopher McQuarrie screenplay goes insanely hard. We'll say that. But it is not the best, Christopher. <laughs> no, it is not. No, it is not. We'll, we'll get, we'll to, get that. to that later. Um, I, was what, what other what other movies had he directed up to this point? Because surely mm. this couldn't be his debut. <laughs> no, I don't think it definitely was not. Since I was, I was about looking to say, at he's something like... and it said that Rebecca Ferguson had been in an earlier okay, movie. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. It, it, he has such a good, like, solid grasp on Way of action. the Gun like, and crazy. Jack Reacher before this. Oh, well, no, I'm very, I'm I'm very interested seen, to see Jack Reacher. I have not now. seen Jack Reacher, but I've heard it's kind of eh, Meh. out of his movies. Oh, well, that kind of sucks. Uh, but yeah, no, um, Christopher McQuarrie, for this being his first time with the Mission Impossible series, um, it's really fantastic. Now I don't he, know. Now he owns the Mission Impossible. Yeah, no. Now he now he has he has bought Tom Cruise, um, <laughs> and uh, now that he's making uh, many many more. He's making uh, <laughs> four in total Mission Impossible movies. It's crazy. It's half the franchise right there, dude. It's half the franchise. Um, what else to say about this? I had a really hard time actually, like, um, gathering my thoughts on this movie. I'm just like, yeah, it's okay. good. Um, for, for mine though, uh, for, for a, for a disclaimer of okay. me, I had just taken, uh, allergy medicine and usually allergy medicine doesn't <laughs> it, like affect me too much. Like it was on meds. This but entire- I was like, I was like. Uh, the whole time I was watching this movie, I could barely stay awake. Why do you think I don't take allergy medicine? Well, no, though? it usually doesn't affect me at all. Uh, but oh, no, it gives me medicine head for, like, the rest but of But I day. was like... Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I can't think. <laughs> I can't think. Uh, <laughs> Mission impossible good. <laughs> so so I am a little... Like, I'm not as, as sharp on this movie as I would have liked. Ah. Uh. Well, neither of us are sharp in this movie as we would have liked. We we're doing a disservice to this movie, Micah. Is that what, is that what you're trying to say? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's. I was just disclaimering. I see. Oh uh, well, I was gonna mention one other thing. Um, yeah, about making this. your basic facts or <laughs> thoughts or whatever go thirty minutes. Oh my don't gosh! You? Oh my gosh! Okay, I was gonna mention that this has a really, really great uh, villain, <laughs> especially compared to the, some of the other French. Like, what, who was the villain in MI two? <laughs> Remy, MI two is just a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got Christopher Walken as the villain in MI1. And you got uh, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman in Ooh. MI3. But who's, who was the villain in Ghost Protocol? In Ghost Protocol, it's that really <laughs> lame nuke, nuke guy. <laughs> nuke guy? Yeah, nuke man. Oh, yeah, I forgot about it. But see, see, this, is, this actually is probably, outside of Philip Seymour Hoffman, my favorite uh, to this MI point, Mission to this Impossible point? villain. Or just overall? To, the, to this point. Up to the, okay, up to the point to say, that we've watched through. I was about to say, Fallout Man. 
<laughs> Dang, the, 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 scre- the screenplay does such a good job of uh, pitting you like personally against the villain in this. Right. You feel but, you feel so, so yeah. happy at, by the end of this. <laughs> yeah, but like I was, I was going to comment on that later. Like Solomon yeah. Lane is the first Mission Impossible villain besides eh, kind of Seymour Hoffman that like is really like imposing the like the the like on the level of ethan exactly like usually like like with philip seymour hoffman (laughs) it was kind of more like you know the people around him in just certain circumstances have made philip seymour hoffman able to beat him every time yeah this seems just like i said i said three brings out the first little glimpse of desperate tom cruise but this is (laughs) The desperate Tom Cruise. We have our can't you see it line. Can't you see it? This is the only way. It's the only way. <laughs> can't you see it? Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to bring up how uh, great of a villain this was from a writing perspective. Yeah. And a performance perspective, too. <laughs> it's such a weird performance. <laughs> it's a really weird performance, <laughs> but I think it works. Anyway, I'm going to go over my basic <clears throat> thoughts. Do it. I like this movie. No. Those are my basic thoughts. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's all the thoughts. No, no um, thoughts head empty. <laughs> I, think, I think it's got, like Ravi said, some of the most uh, memorable sequences. I really love the, the opera scene Ooh, and everything. Yes. The opera scene. Uh, I think I think it's I think it's very odd because it's one of the most memorable when it comes to sequence by sequence, but for some reason the overall movie for me is kind of forgettable. Yeah, it was weird. I I like um, I told Micah before this, if, if you don't mind me uh, interrupting for no, a second. Fine, okay, no. um, I told Micah before we watched this the first time. I'm like, okay, I remember like four scenes from this movie <laughs> no it's it's very odd and, uh i remember liking it though like because like i had put this as number two and i really liked it and i remembered most of it like in, in watching i'm like yeah i know this and i know this. yeah like, exactly I remember, exactly but for some reason like as a whole movie it's kind of forgettable and i don't know why that is yeah i forgot about the whole but it, it had been like over a I year think, since i, watched I think it's this, forgettable so. in the context of there's not much to think of. I think it's simple. Yeah, it is very not simple. Not in a bad way, but it like in an almost a forgettable way. It's very straightforward, very Yeah, it doesn't Ethan really does this action. It doesn't really end. challenge the viewer in much <laughs> at all actually. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I think it's the same thing. Like I think it's this era of the Mission Impossible movies, like the Ghost Ghost Protocol is very similar uh in its forgettableness. It's yeah. just they're so almost plain which plain isn't a good word because they're not no, they're, they're not. interesting movies and i really like them um but, but like idea wise they're very just kind of bland yeah and even in direction and everything because like in mi1 2 and 3 you had very unique styles <laughs> coming into each one of them one two and three yikes <laughs> But yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I really like this movie. Uh, it's got some of my favorite action. Uh, it's got, you know, one of my favorite villains, like Robbie said. Mm. It's got Desperate Tom Cruise, which love me some Desperate Tom Cruise. Wow. Um, it has more Jeremy Renner, which I like me some Jeremy Renner. <laughs> I don't know what your deal is with Jeremy Renner, Mike. Oh, wait, he, I just He's just one of my favorite characters in the series. <laughs> He's fun. <laughs> Tom Cruise in in the next Mission Impossible movie. He's like, ah, yes, beloved side character Jeremy Renner. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gave this movie four and a half stars, by the way, for all you people wondering. <laughs> for all those people who get, assign random numerical scores oh to gosh. pieces of art. They're not <laughs> random numerical scores. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, I guess we can we can pop on into our question section, like a, yes. our main discussion. The main discussion. Pop on in. Do you have any questions, Remy? I do have any questions. Um, how would you rate uh, the villain's glasses selection? Um, <laughs> I think probably only like a 7 out of 10, simply because... He looks awesome in Fallout without them with the beard. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, mine would probably be a six. They're a little, they're a little generic. But what you know, they still fit. Do you want like, do you want like Sonic the Hedgehog glasses? <laughs> yes, that would be that would be ideal. Actually, do that, do that. That would. <laughs> 
<laughs> it looks so freaking ridiculous. <laughs> it's a dire movie. He's like, uh, I see you, hunt. I see you, <laughs> He hunt. pulls down his little glasses. A little circular glasses. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> what, since I can't think of a good question, okay. is your favorite scene or sequence? Ooh, a classic okay. question. Okay. Um, oof. Um, I would say the opera, but I think it's lacking that little bit of oomph that I... Yeah, I no, not much has been set up yet. So um, you have, in the opera scene, you have the drive of like, ooh, who's going to get shot and everything, but you don't have the personal, like... Exactly. Like, a threat drive it's um, just like i might have to actually say the um the uh water vault heist really? thing water yeah vault. it's a it's a good it's a solid i almost it's solid. fell asleep during the water oh vault. my god <laughs> <laughs> well you were drugged micah it doesn't count <laughs> it's true <laughs> um no, I was just surprised because I actually did remember that being like kind of meh for me when I watched it, you know, not almost half asleep. <laughs> I don't know. I I thought it was good stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I think my favorite, I, I really like, I really like fun guns. And I, so I really <laughs> like the opera. Like, I just, I just love like inventive, like you weaponry. You want a clarinet gun like a... What? Well, I mean... It, <laughs> Wait, was that a flute or a clarinet? I guess it was probably a flute. With how... Well, I don't know. It was too long to be a flute. Little thing of a it was too long to be a flute. I don't know. Could've I don't been, know my instruments. Could have been a sax. Like, uh, what is that sax that looks like a... Uh... Not a sax. <laughs> don't know, Micah. Yeah, you, I, you, you music people know what I'm talking about. I was about to about. say, you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so I think it's really between the opera and... I really like... I really like the cold open for this one, even though it's not very long. Not the plain cold open, cold open. but the murder cold open. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I don't know I'm why like I really open. like that. It's not very long, so it's hard to be like, yes, that is definitively my favorite. When, because... you, said, when you said plain cold open, I thought of Ghost Protocol, <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, that is a good cold open. And then I'm like, wait a minute, that's not this movie. Because, <laughs> like, the actual opening of the movie is the plain stunt. Yeah, which is all right. It's, it's, a, it's, no, a, good, it's, it's good. a good tone setter for the movie. It's good. It's just not, it's not my favorite by far. Yeah. Uh, I think I think one of my favorites is the is like the vinyl shop thing. Ooh. But uh Ooh. Ooh. I also I also liked the Tom Cruise uh breaking out of being captured scene. That is a fun scene. I don't know, like like I said, there are so many like almost every scene in this is solid, but like none of them really stand out that much. Which yeah. is kind of sad. But like I, every time I think back to a scene, I'm like, oh yeah, that was that was good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's odd. I think I think that kind of contributes to its kind of forgettableness too. Yeah, it it's like a Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, where where every where scene thing, is just like solid. Yeah, the like, only thing really <laughs> memorable in Ghost Protocol was the Burj Khalifa, which is a very good scene. It is. And it's not like the other scenes weren't good. Exactly. It's just the only memorable one, really, was the Burj Khalifa. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's such a... Now, now I want to watch Ghost Protocol again. Uh -oh. <laughs> or maybe I'll just look up the Burj Khalifa scene. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask, uh, how would you rate uh, the motorcycle car chase, that whole thing, after the water thing, compared to like something like Ghost Protocol's Sandstorm Chase? To be honest, I hardly remember that happening. Um, <laughs> the car chase? Yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I do, but like barely. Uh, I think it's fine. You think? Like, you think? It's, you think it's fine? Um, you know, it's. It, I think it, they could have had more fun with the fact that Tom Cruise was, you know, just a dead, <laughs> dead uh, moments ago. <laughs> and they could have done more like. Spoiler oops. alert: Tom Cruise died. <laughs> <laughs> he dies again because he died in three. Oh shoot how many times <laughs> death count in the franchise Micah? <laughs> how many times does tom cruise die yikes um oh no i was about to say the first one but that was what's her face that they used the drug to take away her uh -huh. pulse not tom cruise um <laughs> this is what you were thinking about 
So you just I, I, I don't think know. it's fine. I don't think it like accomplishes too much. I think I it's wish, fun. I wish they would have similarly to Ghost Protocol cuz I think Ghost Protocols is a bit better, a bit more memorable. Uh they don't escalate it as much as yeah. I would like. They it just, just kind of stays they the kind same. They kind of room room Tom Cruise breaks and turns. I was about to say they a couple motorcycles the only, and the, then they drive down some stairs. The only truly memorable part of that chase was well to me anyway. Uh was uh well, not the only part, but the <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I, I, uh, I don't recall. Um, but uh, when he does the little baby driver stunt in the in the middle of the alleyway, <laughs> well, yeah, I that mean, is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and but hey, Tom Cruise did all that stunt driving. Just about the only thing, which is very cool, um, that they really escalate it with is uh, the motorcycle stuff on the mountain, which is fun, but uh, not no. very like. They wow, do. this is amazing. <laughs> what motorcycle stuff on the mountain? Like when he's flinging everyone off the mountain. It's the same chase. He just gets on a motorcycle. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Micah. <laughs> now I'm telling you, my memory of that section of the movie is extremely fussy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I just mostly wanted to bring up how it was kind of a mediocre chase. Yeah. What do you think of the overall, like, plot of this movie? The actual, what like, happens? <laughs> yeah, like, the syndicate. It's that. weird. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird plot thread to follow. Like, the entire story is, uh... Alec Baldwin Tom <laughs> wants to disembowel all, all of government agents. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise, uh, Tom Cruise thinks, thinks there is syndicate, so Tom Cruise chases after syndicate. Yes. Uh... The, the because of all of the uh, events of past movies, uh, namely IMF, Gross Protocol, <laughs> IMF is under investigation by Alec Baldwin. Uh, <laughs> by by Alec Baldwin, in and Alec universe. Baldwin wants to shut them down, and then he ends up using the CIA to take over IMF. <laughs> blah blah blah, and then they don't think the syndicate is real. Well, I mean, that's a little outlandish, don't you think? Like a, a syndicate. A syndicate. <laughs> Who's uh, ever heard of a syndicate? <laughs> and then, so then they're like. And then Alec Baldwin's like, Tom Cruise is the syndicate. Tom Cruise is the syndicate. <laughs> uh, and then they chase after, because now, now he's the rogue nation or something. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Uh, and then... He is the rogue He ends up actually finding the syndicate. I'm going to become the rogue nation. <laughs> and it kind of just forgets about the CIA. Uh until it becomes useful again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's a very odd plot. I mean, I suppose. How long in the movie do you, is it till Solomon Lane comes in? I'm trying, I'm trying to think. Um, Solomon Lane, he appears for the first time. When does he appear? For the, he like, appears in, in the, the record he's shop. In the, oh, yeah, but I'm saying, like, till he comes into the movie. Like, actually active agent in the movie? Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> It's after know. the opera sequence. I don't yeah. know. It's just very odd that he is the person who's like pit against Ethan, but it takes him so long in the movie to even appear. Is that just what you wanted to bring up? Uh, no, I just wanted to talk, like, get a discussion going about the plot of the movie, and you're not I mean, talking about anything. I don't know. It's it's just it's kind of odd, but it makes sense. I don't know. It's. It's a weird choice for it, for a plot line yeah, to follow. Yeah, I don't know. Like, the CIA stuff and everything, especially, like, the CIA is there. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it could have leaned more in either direction. It just doesn't make of much sense. Of what direction? Sense. Like, just for having... Me, I, think, I think that's my main problem with the plot, is, um, like, you have the CIA stuff, where the CIA takes over, and all of the agents besides Cruz have to, you know, work for the CIA yeah, yeah. now, blah, blah, blah. You could have done a lot with that, but instead, around the, like, the second half of the movie, it kind of just gets forgotten, and you just have all of the Solomon Lane stuff with the crew now, not even having to worry about the CIA for some reason. I mean, I guess you, I guess I could see that. I don't know, I didn't see it as that big of a problem. I don't see it as, like, a huge problem. I think that was just my only, like... It's a weird. It's a weird choice. I the think. Script. It's not a problem. But they needed. In the script. They did need something to uh, make the story happen. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like they could have done something more, like intertwining the two or something. Make it make Solomon uh, more involved with 
the beginning of the story. Yeah, either that, that, that or make the CIA more involved with like the latter, the latter half. half of the movie. Okay, I can see. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. Interesting. I, I didn't think about that. that yeah, that I don't is know. true. It just kind of bothered me about the movie that you spend like a lot of time with the CIA just to <laughs> just to have the movie happen. Because <laughs> the movie has to happen, silly. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get Alec Baldwin as the secretary. <laughs> Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Yikes! I did. I I forgot that we were getting into the Boss Baby, the parts, Boss Baby, the Boss era. Baby era of Mission Impossible. It was a short-lived era. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Oof! Spoiler alert! <laughs> like, I didn't spoil anything. I didn't spoil anything. Um. Okay. Uh, another another throwaway question. <laughs> oh my gosh! All you're you're discussing nothing. Okay, giving well, a bunch of fine, 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 fine. <laughs> I'll do, I'll do a throwaway question, then a real question. It's, what, how would you rate uh, Tom Cruise's haircut in this one? Because it is, it is an interesting medium. It's, I think <laughs> a solid, I think a solid like eight out of ten. I think he, I, I personally think he looks like a dad in his forties on vacation. Well, he is a dad in his forties on vacation. <laughs> Dang so, it. Dang it. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh wait shoot he <laughs> exactly <laughs> Oof. um <laughs> he looks like that because that's what he is <laughs> it's definitely not peak tom cruise hair i think true. i think we get like peak tom cruise hair in like ghost protocol true true um but i don't think it's bad tom cruise hair like mission <laughs> impossible 2 do you say do you like mi one i don't buzz like cut i don't like mi one's buzz thing? cut i don't like mi two's super long cut <laughs> Uh, MI3's hair is fine, and I think this is pretty similar to MI3's yeah, hair. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty close. So I think if we're going, like, era or length, <laughs> anyway, of Tom Cruise, I would say, like, the medium long length of Ghost Protocol is best. I see. Then the kind of shorter but still decently long length of 3, Fallout, and Rogue Nation. Uh, then 1, then 2. Well, there you go. If we're thank you, thank you for that in-depth uh, analysis, Mike. If we're ranking Tom Cruise haircuts, um, I was actually going to ask for my serious question. Serious, this is a serious podcast, Micah. We we critique art, we dissect really? it. Yeah. <laughs> serious, yeah. Um, what did you think of the choice of bringing in another, another, another female uh, side character? <laughs> another, another. Uh, well, I guess she isn't actually a love interest in this. Yeah, good, good for them. Good after, on them. After he gets married, Finally. they don't introduce any more love Finally. interests, which is good. I was very, like, first time <laughs> first watching time through this, I was so like, oh, oh no, that would, that would suck so. Bad, I though. like Julia so much. This would just like it would it would really ruin part of Ethan's character. Yeah, no, it would. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> could you imagine how bad that would be? Am I too, Ethan Wood? Yeah, MI2 MI2 Ethan Ethan would, would, MI2 Ethan would. MI2 Ethan would. Would uh, it, it would romance with every character. Freaking hate MI2 Ethan. <laughs> MI2 Ethan sucks. Me and me and the homies hate MI2 Ethan. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I think it's odd. Uh, it's actually interesting to note that again, like the other movie, uh, <laughs> they tried to get the previous actresses back, <laughs> and they didn't. It's, it seems to be seems to be a trademark of the Mission Impossible franchise to right. bring in a new female side character just every because movie. they couldn't get the actresses back because <laughs> uh, they were gonna bring back Ghost Protocol girl um, which she was awesome and Julia was gonna make an appearance mm-hmm. uh, Julia cameo always a win Julia cameos are always a win <laughs> but they did not because I think according to IMDb scheduling conflicts. Um, and I like Ilsa decently enough. Like I like her more in in Fallout, but I like Ilsa. I think it's a cool. I think it's an interesting like. Um, kind of a show a different side of government like working like, it's like what Ethan does, but it 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 it. it um, wow, I just said it so many times. <laughs> it deconstructs a little bit of Ethan's character because it's kind of shows how yeah, bad was, it can get I was about if you say. just follow what the government agencies tell you to do. It's like, uh, it's like, um, uh, what am I thinking of? Winter Soldier? <laughs> yeah, it's like Winter Soldier. <laughs> it's like Winter Soldier, but good. Micah. Yeah, it's like Winter Soldier, but good. It shows you, um... <laughs> the MCU stands are yelling right now, Micah. <laughs> yeah, well, it, I don't think a single MCU movie really compares to this franchise. <laughs> Yikes. 
Guardians of the Galaxy is better than MI2. Like, well, yeah, most uh, I, could, I would say a lot of the MCU movies are better than MI2. <laughs> I don't know about a lot. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, um, but I think I think she's an interesting enough character, and I like that they bring her back again. Yeah. No, I just uh, I wanted to bring her up because she's a, she's a very important part of this movie, and she's what gives it a l- bit of flavor. Yeah, she gives it the, the the flavor. Flavor, flav, Mike. Because she, <laughs> and she challenges Tom Cruise again in like the in the in the in the plot because, um, like for so many things, like he th- he he tries to trust her because you know he's in a similar situation. Exactly. Her, but she keeps on you know, not, <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, and then like. He, like the whole government thing like I already mentioned and then he al- she's also like come away with me come fly with me <laughs> forget about Solomon Lane <laughs> wow <laughs> is that is that what if they had played come fly with me come fly with me that would be pretty let's funny fly let's fly away that would be a great in credit song actually I don't think for this movie it would fit no it wouldn't really <laughs> just go watch uh, go watch uh, catch me if you can <laughs> Just go watch Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why not? But yeah, I really like Ilsa as a, as an overall character. Yeah. No, I just uh, wanted to bring her up. But yeah, I like her too. <laughs> it's interesting though. I don't know. I don't know if this is like I'm. I'm sure this was on purpose, but it's just odd that um they don't they don't sexualize their female characters that much throughout the <laughs> franchise. It's just two, and yeah. then this movie, and for some reason, like Ilsa was oddly sexualized in <laughs> yeah. this movie. Yeah, I, okay, I wanted to bring that up too, because, like, usually Mission Impossible isn't that... Because even, I was going to say, maybe it's just Christopher McQuarrie, but Fallout doesn't do this no, either. No, Fallout really. doesn't do it. Um, um, they, it. It's almost like like Bond vibes in the way it films its, its female characters yeah. in this movie. I, I just, yeah, it's interesting to bring up. But I don't know. I don't know why they chose to do it in I this was, one. I was like, and and like she's not even like a, room, and and I wonder if they were if the, if originally they were going to try to lean in more into trying to make her a romantic interest to try to get her like more like oh Tom Cruise will actually go away with her. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It was very odd. I just, it's just something I always noticed. I was like, it's kind of weird that this isn't like a normal thing for this franchise, and yet. Yeah, they they sexual they sexualize her like like a like a decent amount in this movie. Yeah, no, it's weird. It's odd to uh, once again another point to just kind of bring up that's just kind of interesting. Yeah, this is, this is a very odd movie overall. Like it's good, but like even if it, you... even in the context of the franchise, it's kind of odd. Yeah, I think I think even more so technically speaking in the context of the franchise, it's yeah. odd. Um, I don't know. Yeah, very very. Very interesting, uh, Mike. Another another good question. Another good question. There are no good questions. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I meant to ask. Uh, if I if I may. Yeah, you may. <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> it's the first time he's let me speak <laughs> in uh, years. Yes, a couple <laughs> seconds ago, I was begging you to say something with wow. real discussion. Um. I was going to ask what you thought of um, the, like, final final sequence. Not to get too spoilery. Like uh, the box? Thing? Yes, the box. I really like the box. I love the box. The box is so I just cool. wanted to bring up, because the box is one of my favorite parts of this I movie. I love the box. <laughs> <laughs> People who haven't watched this movie are like, what's the box? <laughs> <laughs> wow well yeah no i just wanted to i just wanted to mention it because yeah, i think no, I, really, I think that's one of like the most standout sequences i think it's a lot of fun thing. like um going from all the way from starting with like the bomb thing with benji to the box i think that's always i think that's some of the best like paced action of it all yeah i think that's all really fun Oh yeah, no. That uh, I just wanted to mention that sequence because it's just such a standout one in my mind, in my memory, in my mind's eye. I remember Michael. the first time watching it, I was like, "Oh, <sighs> it's the ultimate shut the box." The box. <laughs> <laughs> Michael was having a free uh, freak out the first time we watched this. It was this. cool. It was very cool. <laughs> and you know the way they film the box, you almost don't notice that the box is there. Oh, that that is such it's such a good such a good decision, Micah. Yeah. It was really fun. 
<laughs> it wasn't really fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't have too much else, and I, and I hate because I feel like we haven't gotten into. Yeah, no, I feel like we haven't really talked about this huge much. discussion. But yeah. I feel like it's such an odd movie because it's, it's like it's like Ghost Protocol, where, where it kind of just the scenes aren't really like oh this scene and this scene and this scene. They kind of are just like. Mm, I was about to say, um, just for the sake of the podcast listener at this moment, uh, we usually try to avoid movies like this uh, for the podcast where we don't have that much to say about them because they're like, they're really good or they're just kind of like really kind of mediocre and we don't have too much to say about it. But yeah. since we're doing a whole franchise. Yeah. Because um, like, I don't, yeah, this one's just a very odd one just, to discuss yeah. because it is good, but it's so... I don't want to say surface level, but it is just like, it's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's good. fine. It's, it's good. It's, it's good. And there's nothing really else to say about it's it. It's got good action. Yeah. It's got decent pacing, fun characters, a, a weird, but interesting plot. Um, and there's really just like, like there's not too much wrong with the movie. Exactly. Um, just like some odd things, which is all we've really been able to bring up. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's hard to just like break down at all. Exactly. Um, here's a question. Uh, All right. Since I asked this for, Shoot. for most of them, what do you think of this like in the context of the franchise, what it does for the franchise? The context of the franchise. Um, what does this do for the franchise? <laughs> I mean, not much. It doesn't... Honestly, Ghost Protocol brings up a lot of new things for the franchise, and this one doesn't really build too much on that. I mean, yeah. it introduces the Syndicate and uh, Solomon Lane which do come back, uh, spoilers. <laughs> um, but uh, outside of that, it doesn't introduce much new filmmaking-wise yeah, it's, it's, or it's what I'm saying. tonally. This is, this is kind of an anomaly of, of the Mission Impossible franchise, even more so than literally any other Mission Impossible movie, I would say. It's kind of like The it Force just, Awakens of Mission Impossible movies. It just movies. doesn't do much new. It's yeah. good. Well, I don't know about Force Awakens because... Eh. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's good, but it doesn't do much. Like it sets up some things, sure, like for overall plot wise, but it doesn't do much for the franchise. Like, yeah, like Mission Impossible, the first one got it going. Mission Impossible, um, the first one. Like, like, and it, and it had a very unique style, and it was very interesting. Mission Impossible Two again had an extremely unique style, and while I don't like it, uh, <laughs> it's definitely unique. And it, it introduced the uh, masks it, going as far as they could. Yeah, and it does. It does. It still changes and sets up yeah, some yeah. things and allows the franchise to move more outside. And that's that's my biggest thing with two is it allowed the franchise to do more things, even yeah. if I don't like what it did. It didn't just <laughs> stick to exactly. cookie, cookie cutter like one, two, three, um, <laughs> and then three. You got a lot more serious and a lot more intense. The serious one. Um, and you had a you had a really good villain, um, and a very serious villain, which very, I liked. Very good villain, very serious villain. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then four brought and then Ghost Protocol brought you into this era of Mission Impossible movies where they're more streamlined, and. It brought you all of that, and it brought you Brad Bird's direction. Yeah, I was about and, to say the modern, the modern blockbuster era of Mission Impossible. Yeah, and then I feel like this is just the product of all of that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's just really like not. <laughs> it's just really like everything that has been leading up to it. It honestly, I think this i only like this as much as i do in the context of fallout right? coming out and, and and i was just about to say something though if fallout hadn't gone the direction it did like if fallout wasn't as good as it is i would i would think i would like the franchise a lot less yeah because if if you just did this movie, it's kind of a disappointing well while, while this movie is good if you did this movie like something like uh, that feels like this movie again i would start to get really bored with the franchise yeah <laughs> Because you need you need something new. This is the first one that could get away with doing not really anything new. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think that's I think that's odd. It is very odd, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, without the context of Fallout, I agree. Though I would like this significantly less because most of the things and th and that's the thing. I think. With Christopher McQuarrie, I don't know how much I don't know any really of the behind-the-scenes stuff with this, but I feel like when Christopher McQuarrie got his hands on this, 
he was like, I want to write something that's actually going like to take a plot over several movies. Yeah. So I'm assuming, I don't know, but I'm assuming that uh, that seven and eight are going to have something to do with the syndicate still. That would be very cool. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> then we can have a syndicate era or something. Yeah. Because like you have this that leads directly into Fallout with its plot stuff, having pretty much all the same characters. Ilsa comes back, Solomon Lane comes back, the syndicate comes back. Yeah. Like, like, like it's, it pretty much directly leads into that, uh, which had never really happened in any of the mission impossible movies. Yeah, no, I thought that was interesting to note, uh, as well, because like, um, we, f when we first started watching the mission impossible series, um, fallout wasn't out yet. Yeah. Um, and by the time we ended up watching Rogue Nation Fallout was out, I believe. Yes, it was. And I was like, okay, but like... We would have gone and seen it in theaters, yeah, I was, but we hadn't no, watched no, Rogue yeah. Nation. <laughs> we hadn't seen Rogue Nation. Um, but when I watched it, I'm like, whoa, this is like actually like a direct sequel to Rogue Nation. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, it, like none of the movies, all the movies had... And, and that's what I'm saying. It starts, and even more so than Ghost Protocol did... I think this is really the start of the Macquarie era, if you yeah. will. No, I, I'm um, very much looking forward to this. And <laughs> where they're going to, I'm assuming anyway, just from how they are, they're going to be more actual, like, sequel movies. Yeah. But unfortunately, I feel like they're also just going to be more, like, not as different in each one, you know? Like, I don't think it can be a bad thing, because obviously Fallout was great. Fallout is exactly. my favorite of the franchise. But I don't think we're going to get more of, like the first era of this series where you have like a different director every time and you're doing something different yeah and that's true i have a feeling it's going to become a lot more uh like just one thing which i mean like if it's of, a good thing like a lot of franchises exactly. right now are like like that's that's one thing that's a little sad about this is the mission impossible franchise was kind of unique in the fact that it was doing something that actually kept most of the same cast but did different directors and different stories each time. Yeah. And now I feel like with the Christopher McQuarrie 4 movies, it's going to be a lot like something that you would get from, like, Bond, where they're going to be very similar movies, very in-a-row movies, <laughs> which yeah. isn't necessarily Not a necessarily bad a bad thing. Depending on uh, how they execute them. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty confident in Christopher McQuarrie because... Rogue Nation and Fallout are my two favorite <laughs> Mission Impossible movies. Exactly. Um, but it's still very odd to think about like 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 how seven and eight are going to do and what they're going to do. Yeah. And they better not do any more of the franchise after that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh, that would suck, like, bro. Yeah, Robbie made a comment the other day. He because I was like, yeah, apparently seven and eight are going to be like the end of the franchise in general. Which, A, like, yeah, Tom Cruise is getting pretty old. <laughs> He's like, stop these before he, like, kills himself or oh, something. Oh, that would suck. That would be so bad. If the franchise ended because he got yeah. injured. Oh, yeah, no, if, like, Christopher McQuarrie, like, if they finish 7 and then can't finish 8, oh, that would be, that okay. would be awful. That would be, that would be really awful. Because um, didn't, didn't 7, has 7 wrapped? No, it hasn't yet? wrapped yet, but it's going to wrap pretty soon, I'd imagine. Yeah, they're filming it right now, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Robbie mentioned in the car. He was like, "Yeah, then that like like please don't stop don't the touch movies. It. Do not there. touch the if movies. If you're going to do anything else, Mission Impossible, <laughs> bring back the show yeah, bring, or something. Oh, that like, would do. Imagine like a modern like action show. That would Mission be Impossible. that would be really fun unless they do it really. Yeah, poorly. unless unless it's really bad, <laughs> it would be very fun. Yeah, unless it's unless it becomes like NCIS kind of oh, that, TV. No, not like a procedural a uh, procedural drama. Like yeah. that would suck. Yeah. <laughs> You could do something really cool. Like I, I, I could only see it really working as like a, a team Netflix show. or an HBO. Or yeah, I was gonna like, say. I actually was about to say, what if HBO picked up like a Mission Impossible reboot? That would be awesome. Yeah, like uh, it would have to be something very uh, not network. <laughs> something definitely off menu. <laughs> <laughs> something definitely off menu. Make sure it's linguine. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> McQueeriness, Micah. McQueeriness, yeah. Yes. But go, um, go go watch Ratatouille. Go watch Ratatouille. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll actually get to that later. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck are no, you talking No, we're uh, not that much later because I feel like we're almost done with the discussion. Okay. Um. But yeah, no, I'm glad I, Micah brought up the main thing that I wanted to uh, mention 
with, with this whole like five minute rant just now. Um, <laughs> well, somebody's got to keep somebody's, this podcast somebody's going. Somebody's got to keep this podcast alive. <laughs> um, I guess. Do we want to go over closing? Yeah, closing. Just in closing, my guy. In closing, and then we'll do our uh, rating and ranking um, for the franchise. In conclusion, I think <laughs> Rogue Nation is a very good movie, and I think it has uh, very interesting implications for the franchise. I think it's taking the franchise in a new direction, far greater and far beyond what we previously had. But I do think it is rather forgettable and that it has some very odd creative decisions. <laughs> wow. Those are your, those are your uh, thoughts, Mike? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, th- those were the, those were the uh, closing thoughts. <laughs> I see. Um, uh, my closing thoughts. I, I would actually just probably tend to agree. Usually me and Micah have like such drastically differing opinions. I'm like, no. Right. Usually, uh, <laughs> usually our closing, cl- clothing, closing thoughts are very like cutthroat against exactly. each other. Yeah. No, I just <laughs> mostly agree with them. It's, We're just like, it's, yeah. It's solid. Um, I, Fallout is better. <laughs> Odd creative decisions, yeah. but not bad creative exactly. decisions. Like they, th- th- this movie doesn't take too many risks. When it does take a risk, it tends to pay off. But like, it's I don't just, know. It's it's fine. It's good. yeah. It's it's a fine movie. I enjoy it a lot. Go watch. Go watch Rogue Nation. It's a fun time. It's a lot. It's a lot easier to watch than this to discuss. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> well, that's that should be any movie. Well, <laughs> except for Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Now that we have that out of the way, <laughs> yes, uh, let's do uh, the the recently logged Mission Impossible official franchise ranking. <laughs> trademark. Trademark. <laughs> wow. At the moment we stand, uh, I'll go over our, our previous ranking. Okay. Oh wait, or we should do we should do our ranking and then go over everything. That's a good idea. Um, so what what do you think you would have rated this if you had? Um, if I were to rate it, I would probably rate it. <sighs> Oh, that's so tough. Um, Because it's so close between a four and a four and a half. Um, Probably a four if I'm being if I'm being brutal. (laughs) But uh, four. Yeah, four. I think I think I'm going four. All right. So that puts us with mine and his right there. Eight point five, Micah. Yeah. And we'll see how that stacks up against the rest of the franchise. All right. So, um, in last place, <laughs> with a with an overall score of four out of ten, because this is these are out of ten. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have Mission Impossible Two. Which I mean, that's still two stars, Micah. Yeah, just two stars. <laughs> yes. Uh, then this is this is still really funny to me. Uh, then Mission Impossible One with a <laughs> seven point five. We go from four to seven point five. Oof. Um, then, uh, tied for, uh, third, or second, I mean. You didn't, you didn't say what movie it was, Mike. No, I said MI1, oh. 7.5. Okay. And, uh, then tied for whatever position that would be, either second or... It's tied for second at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, MI3 and MI4, or Ghost Protocol, as it's also known, uh, with eight. They both have eight. Both, both very good movies. Yes. <laughs> and now in first place with its 8.5 is MI5. Heck yeah. We'll see if Fallout can dethrone it. It, it, it can. Definitely it can. <laughs> it can. Se- secret, secret, <laughs> podcast secret. It's, uh, it can't. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, there, there we go. Now you know our official, the official recently logged ranking of the Mission Impossible franchise. Yes. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, all right. Do we want to go into our final segment of the podcast? The final segment. Which is our what we watched, our recently logged, if you will. Uh, yes. So uh, well, we didn't watch too terribly much, yeah, no. so we won't keep you here for long. We're, we're wrapping it up, guys. Don't worry. What? Don't even worry about it. <laughs> it's done a lot of reviews lately, Rami. Ooh, reviews. Spicy. Mm-hmm. I actually reviewed every movie except for two of the ones I we reviewed watched. every movie except for two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Um, um, all right. So we're going to start at... Uh, or, or after rather the 25th which or rather the 26th yeah, because the 26th. that's when we recorded the podcast we just didn't watch anything on the 26th <laughs> yeah uh, so uh, what, what do we start with Rebby? Rat 
at Ui, the Brad Bird the, uh, masterpiece. masterpiece. One might say Ma- masterpiece. <laughs> Ma- best best movie. Be- best movie. Best movie. <laughs> Just best movie. <laughs> best movie? Question mark. <laughs> no. More like best movie. Period. Wow. Why not exclamation point? <laughs> because the period is more like yeah. Final. Best movie. I see. Um, yeah, I really like Ratatouille. It's my favorite movie. Uh, it's uh, good. Five stars. <laughs> it's. Yeah, I would probably. I would probably give it five stars. Go watch it. Uh, uh, it's. It's good. I, I don't. I don't. I don't think of anyone. I don't think anyone hasn't seen I like, Ratatouille. I like, I like, like, uh, yeah, well, go watch it again. <laughs> it, I mean, it's. It's a modern don't, Pixar movie. <laughs> don't. Don't. Don't do. Uh, don't do what my grandma did and not like it just because it has rats in a kitchen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They yeah. wash their paws. They they wash their paws. Good it's job. It's fine. It's fine. You, are you gonna let rats into your kitchen if yeah, they I'm wash their let paws? Them cook. <laughs> the rat is the cook. The rat is the cook. Anyway, five stars. <laughs> yes. Favorite movie. It's it, love we'll, that movie. We'll probably do an episode. French on vibes. It. Love it all. So good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Uh, next we watched. Next we watched. Hail Caesar. Or... Hail Caesar. Oh you yeah, we you didn't log Hail Caesar. No, I didn't see all of it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, we did. We both watched Hail I, Caesar. I caught like the last half of no, it. No, you bro. missed like twenty minutes while you were over at your desk, able to hear the the audio. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, we did a we did an episode on this though. Uh, you can go listen yeah. to that. It's a very Discussed good. It it's a very good episode. It's a very uh, good episode. This movie has grown on me a lot since that episode though, and it has become a very turn on while you're doing something very like fun easy to watch easy to laugh at movie well there you go yeah go listen to our episode about it it's good stuff pretty fond of this movie now then what did we watch Rumi? then we watched damien chazelle's masterpiece it's not a damien chazelle movie <laughs> we watched 10 cloverfield lane very good okay okay so damien chazelle story time damien chazelle was originally uh one of the first people looked at to direct this and he also helped with some of the early story structuring <laughs> and writing so he has like the last build writing credit he has a writing on credit it. micah and robbie's like damien chazelle can you blame me micah yes <laughs> damien chazelle helped write 10 cloverfield lane oh my gosh <laughs> i see it as a win <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, no. If you haven't seen Ten Cloverfield Lane, do yourself a favor. Go yeah. watch Ten Cloverfield uh, Lane. <laughs> I gave it five stars. I know that you're like, wow, he's giving so many movies. Five Honestly, stars. I might give it five stars. But this is one of the only movies it is that so can solid. consistently get me tense while watching a movie. It's so good. It is so freaking solid. With bro. such with such a small area of the movie, like it takes place in such a small area with such a small cast, and it does such a good job with it. Like just everything about this movie it's so good. is cinema. It was it, it fits it fits the thriller Halloween y vibe we were going for. Unquestionably the best Cloverfield movie. Yes. Unless you're a real found footage junkie or something. I like I like me some good found footage. It's just this is better. <laughs> wow. But yes, no, please go watch uh Ten Cloverfield Lane. Do Very it. good. Do it. All right. Then on the 28th as well, I watched uh, <laughs> some next. of. I, some I logged of. it to where I would remember wow. it. Wow. Uh, you didn't uh, even watch the whole thing? No, I couldn't, man. I oh couldn't. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I turned on The Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the John Treader. I'm a huge Narnia books fan. I've listened to the books on audio like a million times. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I don't remember this movie very well. Let's turn it on it's on disney give her a watch and then i cried don treader isn't don treader your favorite book (laughs) don treader is not my favorite book it's my favorite book out of the movies they do Uh, my favorite book is the silver chair silver chair why is the chair silver anyway we'll never know (laughs) (laughs) uh but man uh, i hate it uh but i also might be doing a video on on them soon after watching that, I was like, I really want to do a video on yeah, this. Yeah, link, link to Micah's uh, YouTube channel in the yes. podcast description. I just came out with a video, it and, it, and it's not doing very well, which I knew it wouldn't, <laughs> but still, go watch. Wait, what video? The anime Oh, video. the anime. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, You're part of the problem, Robbie. I'm sorry, I'm the problem. Then what are we watching the 29th? Um, quite possibly the death of cinema, maybe? Quite possibly the birth of cinema. <laughs> bug? Bug. That Just bug, that's it. 1975. 1975's the... The bug. B- nope, not just bug. Well, 1975's movie uh, bug. 
Like it's it's the 1975. Uh, they're belonging to 1975. Oh my gosh! The, the movie no, it's just bug. bug. It's just 1975's <laughs> bug. Okay. Uh, it was it was the beginning was fun. I'll give it that. Yeah, no. The actually the first act is pretty great. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, yeah, yeah. This is this is the kind of B movie I could get behind. I was about to say it's like matinee but bad. <laughs> yeah, and then it just falls way off the deep end. I don't know who the heck was in the writers' room. Oh my gosh, what the heck they the were thinking? The third act, whatever. The third act is such a joke. Third act, what? It, it, the third act feels like some fanfic or something. Yeah, right. Like like it feels like a fanfic of the of first the movie, act. Yeah, of the first, like <laughs> continuing the first act. <laughs> It's really bad. Don't watch Bug. We live, Don't Robbie. Do it. We live. Although those roaches, I'm a fun fact, guys. I'm allergic to roaches, um, and the roaches in this were filmed very well. Yeah, no, uh, in the beginning of the in the beginning of the credits, it was like insect wrangler or something, <laughs> and I was, he did a really good job. They got actually some really cool shots of the bugs. Bro, watch this for like if you are gonna watch this, watch it for uh, the roach footage. Yeah, it the looks roaches, very good. The it looks cool. very cool. Uh, <laughs> then, then we watched. Uh, uh, on the 29th as well. Heck yeah. Suspiria. Heck yeah. 1977. Uh, two 70s movies this in is, one day. This is now one of my favorite movies this of is, all time. This is one of my favorite We need movies to do it on too. the podcast sometime. Um, it's so good. I definitely want to do it on the <laughs> podcast. Uh, I watched it with, with one of my friends who hadn't seen it, and she was she's a big horror fan. Big, big horror fan. And she fan. hadn't watched Suspiria, so I was like, come over and watch Suspiria. Come, come, come over and watch Suspiria. <laughs> uh, and it was still good, which I was worried. I, I was, I, like, in the back of my mind, as much as I really enjoyed yeah, it the first was, time. This was the I second was viewing? Concerned, yeah, I, second, I was concerned yeah. that on this viewing I wouldn't like it as much, and then I did. I liked it more. I actually time. liked it more as well. So. Oh, it's so good. This is the only. This is the only movie that gets me like viscerally scared. Buy buy me this movie for Christmas. <laughs> like this is the only. This is the only time watching a movie where I've been like visceral, viscerally like flight or fight or fight or flight. Okay, I've never gotten kind of like that in a movie, but it is one. Of, I think this is the only there one that's only, done There are only me. two movies it's I can crazy. think of honestly that that make me feel tense while watching, and it's Ten Cloverfield Lane in this movie. Yeah. So. Do with that what you will, <laughs> bro. This thing's terrifying, though. Uh, I love it. I love it. So I gave much. that four and a half, and I forgot to mention my ratings because Robbie's not doing it. I oh, gave yeah, yeah. I gave Bug two and a half. <laughs> bug. Uh, we went from I, Bug to Suspiria. And then I gave, well, yeah, it doesn't get much better with our Bug to transition. Yikes. Uh, then on the twenty, no, on the thirtieth, I should say, October thirtieth. Yes, October thirtieth. We watched for the first time Guillermo del Toro's masterpiece. Mm. Pan's Labyrinth. First time. First viewing, Ooh. baby. It is so good. It is so freaking good. This Cinema. Is, this is one of the only Spanish movies I've ever seen. Cinema, Rabbi. One of the only, one of the only Spanish Cinema. movies I've ever seen. I think this is the only Spanish movie I've ever seen. <laughs> you didn't watch Roma, Mike? I did not watch Roma. <laughs> but dang. Yeah. Oh so my good. gosh, it's so good. We need to do an episode on Pan's Labyrinth, too. Yeah, we really do. This would actually be a really cool movie to do an episode on. Uh, Yeah. No, I can easily see why it's one of the highest rated movies on Letterboxd. Ophelia, more like awesome actress. <laughs> That's true. I don't know where they found her, but like, oh my gosh. For for a, uh, I think I looked it up. I think she was like 12 or 13 or something when she filmed this. This is like Spielberg levels and... of finding a kid actor and then giving a great performance. Right, and then, then not acting in anything <laughs> yeah, else. Yeah, and then not, not being in anything else. <laughs> uh yeah no just so good on so many levels it 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 was extremely though uh, not not that it's a bad thing but it was extremely guillermo del toro oh yeah no very to the core yeah like (laughs) more even more than hellboy was this is this is like del toro (laughs) this is guillermo del toro to its to its roots its dna (laughs) yeah which which you know good i really like that (laughs) i love i love i love uh especially guillermo del toro's um like makeup, makeup, and and, and and really art design. I, I guess I like his say. art direction, art direction, and his, art design, yeah. and everything that happens. That I I love it. This yeah. is very good. I oh, gave it four and a half. It's so good. Uh, it wasn't quite five stars for me. I think I I think I want a rewatch of this because I feel like there's a lot of subtext no, and stuff yeah, that I, I didn't that, catch I on the first I put that in my review viewing. for this. I was like, the, I, this this movie feels like you need a rewatch yeah. to really get it fully. Um. But for me on the first viewing, uh, and I've said this before, uh, five-star movies for me are just like, 
Usually <laughs> they could be about the same quality as four and a half stars. They just have to have that five that star oomph. oomph. The oomph and like... on this viewing, it did not quite have that oomph. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, hopefully it I'm will. I'm sorry for your loss, Micah. Hopefully it will in future <laughs> viewings because I re I it's so good. I want to watch it again. Uh, what did you watch after that, Micah? Then on the 31st. On halloween -y. I watched The Sixth Sense. All Hallows' Eve, Micah. <laughs> the Sixth Boy. Uh, sixth boy. Yes. Look at him. Boy. I was like, man, I just need to go watch AI now. Um, best M Night Shyamalan movie. Fun uh, fact. Fun fact about uh, fun fact about yeah. the Sixth Sense. It's That's the best. True. It's the best Shyamalan movie. <laughs> That's true. I was split, about to say Split, split. is the only contender. Yeah, it's, and it's this, not, it's and not then as Split, good. and then uh, Signs for me. Ooh, signs signs is so weird for me. I don't know. We we need to do a we need to do a Shyamalan, Shyamalan. series. I want to watch the rest of Shyamalan's movie. Well, I want to watch the other Shyamalan <laughs> I wanna watch horror some, movie. I want to watch some of Shyamalan's <laughs> other movies. <laughs> I want to watch The Visit. That's that's what I'm going for. <laughs> Yikes. Um, but yeah, we'll probably we'll probably end up doing a Sixth Sense episode some Halloween. It's fun. Uh, it's got it's it was one of, it was one of the first movies that I watched that I was like whoa that's whoa. a lot of gore guys that's a lot of gore whoa uh, but yeah it's really fun uh, the kid does a good job Bruce Willis is <laughs> Bruce Willis uh, Bruce, Willis is, Bruce Willis plays Bruce Willis <laughs> but yeah it's very good I gave it four stars yeah six cents is good then controversial take watch? uh we watched uh two thousands four. Uh, 2004? What the heck is that? 2004 Shyamalan. <laughs> 2004. <laughs> um, we watched another Shyamalan movie, The Village. Good stuff. Yep. Well, Walking Phoenix. Well, it's okay stuff. Yeah, <laughs> mediocre stuff. It has some good stuff in there. I think I think a lot of this for me, uh, I love the main cast for this. Mm. Like, like Bryce Walking Dallas Phoenix, Howard. Bryce Dallas Howard, Adrian Brody, inject them into my veins. <laughs> Not Sigourney Weaver, Mecca. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver is okay in most parts. Wow, just okay. This was not. This was not peak Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> no, not even close. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love that main cast. It's um, good stuff. I love. I love the. Love the Lucius Ivy relationship. Heck uh, yeah! Wish there was more of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we talked about it, and I have to agree with Robbie on this. Even though it wouldn't make much sense, I wish they just like. <laughs> Abandoned. Made it a romance drama. <laughs> I wish they would have just abandoned the supernatural, or not even supernatural the, just twist. The twist. The twist. Stuff. I. I. Ugh, it's because it's the third the act where this movie it. falls apart. It's the worst part of the whole movie. Yeah, it really when is. they do their whole like oh. And unfortunately, that was like the whole pitch for the movie. That was yeah. like the idea for the movie. But like the good stuff is when it's just contained to the village. My kids like and the mind the manipulation thing mind from Teen Titans. Manip <laughs> mind manipulation. <laughs> that's on. That's what M Night Shyamalan was going mind for. Mind manipulation. <laughs> Uh, Teen Titans go to the movies. What a what a movie. Better better than the village. I'm not wearing a shirt. I'm not wearing a shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I I don't know. There's just so much. For some reason, there was just so much chemistry between Joaquin Phoenix and, and Bryce Dallas Howard that I just wanted more. And you don't get more. <laughs> no. <laughs> fun characters. Even even Adrian Brody's character was fun, and it's just. Met Albeit overall. a little problematic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I looking back at this, this is not a yeah, not I a shining like, moment. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, what is it? Are they saying that there would have been innocence in the village if it wasn't for somebody with a uh, mental disability? I was like, yeah. what? Yeah, this is not okay. Not not, not good. <laughs> I was like, this is really bad. This didn't. What? Yeah, yeah. No, the uh, ooh. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I don't know. I doubt when did that's... When this come? 2004? I okay. doubt that's what that's Shyamalan was going for. Yeah, but, but I think that, unintentionally... That subtext is there. Yeah, I was about to say, I think unintentionally um, that has uh, slipped into this movie, unfortunately. Yeah, it leaves kind of a, like, uh, like no, a sour leaves, taste No, it leaves a very sour... Mouth. This movie leaves a very sour taste in my mouth. Even, as much as I love the romance... Uh, I love. I really like the dialogue scenes in this movie. <laughs> the dialogue. The blocking. Mm. <laughs> the dialogue, though. It's it's good. It's good. <laughs> the dialogue is so whack. Um. But yeah. What did what anyway, did we watch after that, Micah? Uh, after that, we watched his house. His house on the first of November. Which uh, you know, good stuff. The Netflix original. Netflix original. Um. Which is sometimes a bad thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> this was a good movie, but I feel like it was very odd. It is odd. Like, like it has, like, it's it's a directorial, feature-length directorial debut. Which, fantastic debut. No, like, not a, gonna like, lie. like a, technically, like, direction and filmmaking. I would be, I, I think would this be is, like, like, really good. I would be so proud of this if I made this as my the first only, movie. The only thing about, like, on the technical side that doesn't look good is the, some of the CG, but that's but just with that's, the territory. Yeah, it's I was a about to say, budget, that comes with the territory. It's low-budget horror and movie. And it doesn't even look that no, bad. It it's not distractingly bad. bad. No. Um... Uh, but I don't know. I think it's. I think I have some. I, I don't know. I have some we, qualms. I want to do an episode on. I this. I want to watch it again to really get yeah, get yeah. it down more because the story is very odd, and I I don't know. I, I I wasn't as big of a fan of it as I would have liked, but I did give it three stars. I don't know. It's like. it's been one of my favorites of this year. I really loved it. It made my like top six of the year, but that's not entirely <laughs> yeah, hard to do. Yeah, there's not been that many good ones this year. Go watch. Go watch it on Netflix. Yeah, uh, no, go it's watch a, it's it. a good it's one. Fun. It's a good one. Uh, yeah. Um, and then we watched uh, Rogue Nation, watched Rogue which Nation. brings us to right now, Mike. Right now? You are, you guys are now living in the present we, with us. We've caught up with the podcast. The timelines now, have converged. The, the, the podcast now <laughs> just has to talk about what's happening right now. What's happening? Uh, right now, I'm watching The Wall in the Studio. Uh, yes, I see <laughs> the, the bookshelf with yes. many books. I see uh, Alcatraz. <laughs> I, rate, I rate this bookshelf 7 out of 10. Uh, <laughs> I rate this bookshelf... Uh, a solid eight out of ten. Too chaotic, I think. Nah, it's <laughs> just the perfect amount of chaos. I see. You got you got the land of Elion books. You oh my got, god. Uh, the the thirty nine clues. What do, what do you got over there? You got a red wall book. Okay, like this has been a really long episode where we've talked about nothing. We're over an hour now. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, we need to wrap this call, up. Let's call it a day. That's all we watched. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Yeah. Uh, Next week, what are we doing next week? Next week on Recently Logged. <laughs> do, do, do. Uh, I don't know. I'm quitting the podcast. I'm Robbie. quitting. The I'm done. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't leave. <laughs> now I have to find a new co-host. Insert insert clip of Luke. <laughs> Hi ho, guys. I'm British. <laughs> Pretty funny. Oh, wow. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.